he was present at the beginning of the hearing, and so we're delighted now uh, to yield five minutes to Mr. Owens. Mr. Owens, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you so much. Uh, I think as, as I, I'm going to start asking my questions in a second, but I'd like just to, to bring back a little bit of history, because I think history is really important as we talk about our past and where our, uh, the, uh, a lot of our evils have happened. Uh, and it's not been an American problem. It's been pretty specific. When you think about uh, where slavery began, where segregation, where Jim Crow, there's always always the Democratic Party. Earlier, we mentioned the 40 acres of the mule. That was ended by a Democratic president, Andrew Johnson. We talked about the KKK. That was a Democratic uh, uh, terrorist organization that actually was ended uh, at the end of the uh, uh, 1880s, but brought back again by Woodrow Wilson in uh, 1915. Uh, and by the way, the lynching that we're talking about, it's horrendous. 4,700 people died by the, the hands of mobs. 1,300 of those uh, were whites, uh, uh, Italians and Catholics, because we're looking at a, a, a people that were just angry, evil people that hated anything that was different from them. So I think it's important to keep that in mind. And if we want to talk about reparations, let's look more specifically in terms of the people that actually did it. And it was not Americans. Americans fought against that. That's why we end up winning uh, and, 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 and defeating slavery, because so many Americans have decided it was an evil thing to, invent, uh, to finish up. So I wanted to make that make that point. Uh, uh, Mr. Elder, I have a question. Last year, prior to the pandemic, the strength of the U.S. economy helped all Americans, most notably minority Americans. In fact, uh, in uh, CNBC uh, in, in 2019 said American, uh, uh, African-American unemployment hit the lowest ever in the history of our country from a peak in, uh, in 2020. 2010 of 16.6%. First of all, uh, how how did that happen, and uh, is that is that in your in your uh, understanding correct? Those those particular numbers. Well, that's right. It, it happened because uh, taxes got lowered, regulations uh, got eased, and the economy took off. And when the economy takes off, uh, those who are uh, unskilled disproportionately uh, improve. Just as happened during the Reagan administration. During the Reagan administration. Black adult unemployment fell faster than did white un adult un un unemployment. Hispanic adult unemployment fell faster than white unemployment fell. Uh, teen, uh, black teen unemployment fell faster than white teen unemployment. Uh, good economic policies work. Equal rights and equal results are two very different things, and that's what I think uh, we're getting confused about here. Everybody's entitled to equal rights, but nobody's entitled uh, to equal results. Uh, one of the witnesses, I believe it was Mr. Shelton, referred to Africans as being torn out of their country. Well, according to Harvard's Henry Louis Gates, that's not how it happened at all. 90% of Africans were sold by African chieftains who conquered them uh, in tribes, so European slavers and to Arab slavers. And speaking of Arab slavers, the Arab slave trade uh, took place centuries before the European slave trade did and lasted longer and the death rate was much, much higher. So as we talk about who pays who, uh, this is going to be one of the greatest generational transfers of wealth back and forth because virtually every people on the face of the earth was involved in slavery. Europeans enslaved uh, uh, Europeans, Africans enslaved Africans, that's mentioned. Uh, Native Americans even enslaved, uh, enslaved Native Americans, Asians enslaved Asians. In fact, uh, white uh, Muslim slavers took more whites out of the Mediterranean than European slavers took uh, blacks out of Africa to North America. So figuring out who owes what is going to be a hell of an achievement. Now, uh, I've been in radio and TV for some 35 years. And during that time, I have been unsuccessful in getting some of these black leaders on my program. Al Sharpton won't come on. Uh, Jesse Jackson won't come on. Farrakhan won't come on. I will give uh, Congressman uh, Jackson Lee credit because she did come on my show several years ago. You may not remember it, Congresswoman, but she did come on several years ago. And one of the leaders I was able to get on was Kawese Nflume, who's now back in Congress. He was then the president of the NAACP, having left Congress. And I said, Mr. Nflume, as between the presence of white racism or the absence of black fathers, which poses the bigger threat to the black community. Without missing a beat, he said the absence of black fathers. In 1918, excuse me, 1915, 18 percent of black fathers, of blacks were born outside of wedlock. That number now is almost 70 percent. I think most of us would agree that there was greater racism in 1950 than right now. We're not having a discussion about whether or not the welfare state has incentivized women to marry the government. Uh, and incentivize men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. And it was Barack Obama who said, a kid raised without a father is five times more likely to be poor and commit crime, nine times more likely to drop out of school, 20 times more likely to end up in jail. Why are we having a discussion about the absence of black fathers and all of the unintended consequences that flow through that? 
Congressman Owens mentioned the high schools in Baltimore where 0% can do math at grade level. Actually, it's 13 public high schools in Baltimore where 0% of kids can do math at grade level, and another half a dozen where only 1% can. Now, Baltimore is a city where in 2015, uh, Freddie Gray died in police custody, as you know. The mayor was black. Number one and number two running the police department, black. City council, all Democrat, majority black. Three of the six cops who were charged, black. The the I'll allow the witness to complete his answer. Okay. Elder, complete thank, your answer. You. thank you. The judge before whom two of the of the officers tried the case was black. The state attorney who blocked the charges against the officers was black. The U.S. attorney was black. And the president of the United States is black. And we're talking about systemic institutional racism. To me, it's crazy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Elder. And um, we are certainly appreciative of uh, your words and we well know that all of those uh, suggestions that you've made is exactly what a commission does it is fact finding it repairs and it develops proposals i'm delighted now to yield to 